If you wanted to build 10,000 nuclear reactors, how would you do it? A new startup says it has a way, one that focuses on what is often the biggest hurdle for nuclear adoption, the construction. And it's not trying to build just one or 10 reactors more efficiently, it's aiming for 10,000 of them, albeit ones that are maybe much smaller than what we're used to. Still, it's an absolutely mind-blowing number when you consider that there are only around 400 power reactors worldwide. So, it's time to see how this could work and find out if it's really possible. The conventional approach is for a utility to select an appropriate site, contract with a vendor who will then customize the design, and then begin construction with thousands of contractors who will build the massive units. All the while the regulator is performing inspections to make sure everything is up to code and safe before giving approval for commissioning and operation. This has been the typical model for decades. And at least in the West and places like the US and Europe, this approach has routinely led to continuous delays, missed deadlines, and significant cost overruns. These often turn what might have been an attractive source of carbon-free energy into a quagmire of finger-pointing and lawsuits, with usually the utility customers, that's you and me, on the hook to pay for it all. Last Energy is a company designing what they call the only true small modular reactor, or SMR, today. Producing just 20 megawatts of electricity, it's noticeably smaller than a lot of other designs from companies that have gotten a lot of attention lately, like NuScale or General Electric. But what it lacks in output, it instead focuses on tackling the main issue that has plagued the nuclear industry for decades. High upfront costs and long construction times that often lead to years of delay before even a single watt of electricity is produced, if ever. Last Energy's design tackles these problems head on with a somewhat unusual approach for a startup. No new technology. Yeah, you heard that right. That means no serious innovation, no new materials, and no new chemistry. They're instead relying on the existing nuclear technology found in over 300 reactors worldwide. While that may initially seem like a boring or even questionable idea, using proven designs and components means Last Energy doesn't have to spend millions of dollars and potentially years in research and development, greatly shortening the time that they need to come to the market. The next great innovation in nuclear technology isn't going to help anybody today if it needs to spend the next 10 years in research in the laboratory. These are things that have greatly hampered and delayed more creative designs from companies like TerraPower. I'm not saying companies shouldn't have long-term goals and avoid research altogether, but not every company needs to be the next technology pioneer. Last Energy intends to use as many commercially available, off-the-shelf parts as possible. Most nuclear projects require long lead times and custom components to meet a customer or utility specification. Last Energy's approach means they are offering a standard product with limited options. It's like comparing a custom, hand-built car to a mass-produced car. One might have a specialized engine, suspension, exhaust, and a specific number of cup holders, but it will cost a lot more and take a lot longer to build than if you just pick something off of the lot. Last Energy estimates that the majority of the components necessary for its design are commercially available, and is looking to leverage fabrication experience from the oil and gas industry, where a lot of the pumps, tanks, and valves have to withstand similar high pressure and temperature environments. They have sized the plant to work with common flow rates and pumps. For example, even the steam generator, a large component that typically requires two or three years of lead time in other plants, is already available as a standard part. This should reduce cost and fabrication times for much of the plant. Last Energy is also planning on shifting almost the entire fabrication to a factory, and then transporting those components or modules to the site of the plant with each module being about the size of a shipping container. These modules can then be assembled together like building blocks in a much simpler way, compared to the traditional approach of building all the structures on site and then installing all of the components, piping, and electrical systems. By taking this approach, the company claims that the time between placing an order and having an operational unit is less than 24 months, with only three months of actual on-site construction time which is remarkably fast compared to the historical performance of the nuclear industry, where delivery times can easily exceed a decade or more. The company went so far as to build a demonstration of its power cube in Texas, which contained a mock-up of the reactor core and steam generator, fabricating and assembling each of the nine modules to show the simplicity and feasibility of on-site construction. Although the actual unit will be built underground, it showed what was possible, assembling the structure in just two days. Of course, the final design will contain more components and require external connections, but it gives credibility to the speed at which prefabricated modules could be put together. So what about the actual design of the plant? 
as I said, it's a relatively small 20 megawatts electric plant, powered by a traditional pressurized light water reactor that fissions uranium fuel. If that sounds complicated, don't worry. This is essentially the same type of nuclear reactor that operates in around 300 plants around the world, only just a lot smaller. Remember, one of the key guiding principles is using existing technology, only what's been shown to work. Doing this should simplify the design as there's a lot of information from operating plants that can be used. The result is something that would look very familiar to anybody who's seen an existing plant before. The underground modules contain a single pressurized primary water loop with the reactor itself, connected to a steam generator that produces high pressure and temperature steam. That's then connected by piping to the above ground modules that then spin a turbine generator to make electricity. The design relies on standard, off-the-shelf components for majority of the piping and connections to the turbine and cooling systems. Again, simplifying the design and construction. Even the fuel is standard, or at least as standard as you can get for a nuclear reactor. Like nearly all reactors worldwide, the fuel is slightly enriched uranium to just under 5%, loaded into typical fuel assemblies, arranged into a grid, and then placed into the reactor core. Up to 24 assemblies are planned, compared to the sometimes over 200 in a large power reactor. The difference is seen in the power output. Large reactors may put out over 1,000 megawatts, while Last Energy is designed to put out just 20. When it comes to safety, we see a lot of the new designs taking a different approach to what's been done in the past. While traditional plants rely on large pumps and water tanks that must be activated at the right time in the event of an emergency, new designs like NuScale, or the aptly named Ultrasafe Nuclear Corporation, are designed with passive safety systems that don't require these active components, instead relying on fundamental physics like gravity, natural circulation, or pressure differentials to ensure safety. This means safety is inherent in the design, rather than on a sequence of events or operator actions. Last Energy falls somewhere in between. It also utilizes passive cooling systems. And since the reactor is enclosed underground in a leak-tight steel container, that provides additional protection to the outside public against any potential radiation release. The small power output also means that, unlike many larger designs, the plant can be entirely air-cooled. This offers significant advantages to where the plant can be built, since most other designs require a significant amount of water for cooling, like a river or an ocean. So who can use such a small reactor anyway? While large power reactors are typically designed to support the electrical grid as a whole, powering whole cities, very small reactors like this target a much more specific use. Last Energy's focus is on providing reliable, carbon-free power to industrial facilities that would benefit from dedicated power supplies. And these plants can provide not only electricity, but heat that can be used in industrial processes, like certain chemical plants. The reactor could be built next to a factory and provide a dedicated supply of energy. If more than 20 megawatts are required, additional units could be built together, giving additional flexibility. Since the footprint of each unit is only about the size of a football field or pitch, building multiple units on the same site could be done without requiring large amounts of additional land. They also could be built in remote locations or places that don't have access to a stable grid. Remote mining, research, or military stations could be good potential candidates since they are places that typically rely on imports of diesel fuel to operate generators. Standalone, small, and simple reactors provide a solution since they can run for a long time before needing additional fuel, improving the security and reliability of their business. Speaking of fueling, Last Energy's reactor core is loaded with enough uranium to operate for six years before it runs out and needs to be refueled. And here, the design takes somewhat of a different approach compared to other reactors. Most large reactors operate for one to two years before their fuel is exhausted and must be shut down to rearrange and add new fuel in a process called a refueling outage. Typically, a plant will bring in hundreds, if not thousands of temporary workers to disassemble the reactor, remove the old fuel, and place new fuel inside before reassembling and restarting. This is a complex process that can take about a month or more to complete. Last Energy's approach is that rather than disassembling the reactor and rearranging the fuel, the entire reactor vessel is replaced as one modular unit, disconnecting the old with the spent fuel still inside and installing a new one with fresh fuel. The old reactor vessel is then stored on-site underground, with the fuel being protected inside the same reactor it operated. This does introduce some inefficiencies in that instead of only replacing the fuel, the entire vessel has to be replaced. While Last Energy has not released any cost figures for this, it does simplify their fueling process because the fuel is never handled directly, reducing radiation concerns. 
It also solves the issue of where to place the fuel in the short term, since it is already enclosed and protected in the old reactor vessel. The three-month process to replace the reactor vessel should also require fewer on-site temporary staff, which again would simplify doing so in remote locations. So if the design and construction methods are relatively straightforward, what about getting regulatory approvals? This has been a difficult area for many nuclear companies, with thousands of rules that need to be followed. While Last Energy is a US-based startup, they are not currently looking to build or license their design in the US, but instead are focusing on Europe, where the company says market pricing is more attractive and energy security has become a greater concern over the last year. Last Energy also expects the European nuclear regulatory framework to be more flexible towards alternative designs compared to the US. The company has signed a letter of intent to construct as many as 10 reactors in Poland and has engaged in pre-licensing discussions with the Polish nuclear regulator. They have also entered into an agreement with Romania to explore constructing a demonstration unit and have begun initial discussions with the UK nuclear regulator. Even with regulations that are more adaptable, Europe has not been a dream place to build a nuclear reactor in the last few decades. Finland began construction of a large reactor in 2005 that is finally commercially operable in 2023. A similar story has played out in France, with a reactor starting construction in 2007 and is not expected to be commercially operable until 2024 at the earliest. Although European regulators may be more adaptable to new and smaller designs, how much success the company will have in these markets remains to be seen, as unexpected challenges could still come up which could delay timelines or add cost to the design. Speaking of cost, Last Energy estimates that the total price for one of its units is around $100 million, which means the overnight capital cost comes in right at $5,000 per kilowatt. This is around the same as other nuclear projects, like Korea's large APR 1400 at $4,200 per kilowatt, but substantially less than NuScale's SMR, which has seen its cost estimates soar as high as $20,000 per kilowatt. On a direct comparison, it might not be as economically competitive to wind and solar, which range between $1,000 and $1,500 per kilowatts to install, but offers other advantages such as higher availability and can provide industrial heat. What's really interesting though is the business model they are taking, which is aimed directly at the high upfront capital costs and uncertainty in construction time of traditional nuclear plants. The traditional approach used by the nuclear industry is that the utility buying the reactor provides all or most of the upfront capital, which can be billions of dollars, and contracts the designer of the plants as well as another company to build it, who then completes the plant and turns it over for the utility to operate. But if there are delays in construction, there are usually disagreements about the cause of the delay, whether it's the design, construction quality, or issues with the regulator. Since the utility is providing the capital to build the plant, it's the utility then that often bears the cost of the delays. This ultimately means it's the utility's electric customers, you and me, who end up paying. Last Energy is trying to upend this model by taking a page from the renewables industry and implement a vendor-constructor-operator model. In this model, the utility provides no upfront capital and instead enters into a long-term power purchase agreement where the utility agrees to buy power at a set price for a number of years. Last Energy manages sourcing private capital for each project. Then, Last Energy builds and operates the power plants, selling the power at an agreed upon price. From a customer perspective, this is a huge benefit. It removes the financial risk of delay from the utility or factory or customer or whoever is buying the power because any delays are borne by Last Energy as the project owner, constructor, and operator, not the utility or its customers. So what challenges might we expect to see? While Last Energy is a startup with a relatively novel approach, nuclear energy has a historically high barrier to entry. The cost to develop a new reactor, even one based on existing or similar designs, often takes years and hundreds, if not thousands, of specialized engineers and technicians. NuScale has been in development since 2002 and has around 500 employees, plus numerous contractors. Last Energy currently has about 50 employees, about half of which are dedicated to design and the other half to government affairs, which will be challenging to produce the complete detailed design, especially given the company says its first demonstration unit will be operable in 2025. And a working demonstration plant will be key to demonstrating that Last Energy's approach is viable. While using off-the-shelf components from the oil and gas industry or conventional fossil plants will certainly reduce construction time and costs, these components were originally designed for a different purpose and will need to be demonstrated they can work in the more stringent nuclear environment. 
The components and modules will need to meet a number of quality and regulatory requirements that may be unfamiliar to those in the oil and gas industry, meaning new procedures, testing, and inspections will need to be performed, which could add delays or increase costs. This is not the first time a new company has tried to enter the nuclear market with a new novel design. Oklo, a startup from California, submitted its Aurora design to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission for review back in 2020. Praised by the public for its sleek design and awe-inspiring visuals, ultimately the regulator said the small reactor lacked the necessary engineering substance. The NRC officially rejected the submission after two years, saying it had not received sufficient information to perform its review. Because of Oklo's repeated failures to provide necessary information about its reactor, the NRC's review of the Aurora Custom Combined License application cannot move forward. It just goes to show how much of an uphill battle it can be for newcomers to enter the nuclear market, even with a small reactor. And while Last Energy is not planning on making any application to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission at this time, it is unlikely any other regulator is going to be any more forgiving and require any less information in a detailed review. And finally, that number, 10,000 reactors around the world. It certainly sounds impressive. But it also means there could be thousands of places that need to be protected for security and proliferation concerns. Currently, the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, monitors the majority of nuclear reactors with cameras and inspectors to make sure nuclear material isn't diverted to make nuclear bombs, just like in other reactors of this type. Although it would likely take decades to reach that many, 10,000 reactors is an increase of 25 times in the total number that would need to be monitored, which will be a huge challenge and will need to be approached carefully by the international community. To their credit, Last Energy is trying to tackle the difficulty of construction, one of the biggest stumbling blocks for many nuclear projects around the world. Their use of many off-the-shelf components, which fundamentally aren't that different from the specialized parts in other plants, takes advantage of existing supply chains and should reduce cost. Using existing technology, no new innovation should also simplify the design, even if it does miss out on some of the innovations that would improve safety or efficiency. But if it was so easy, everybody would do it. Last Energy certainly has their work cut out for them with a small design team adhering to stringent quality and regulatory standards and ensuring the plant operates safely. However, these challenges aren't discouraging them from moving forward with several promising projects in Europe. Nuclear energy has the potential to provide dependable and environmentally friendly power making it a worthwhile pursuit for last energy. Will we see the day with 10,000 reactors operating around the world? Let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to thank Last Energy for providing information and video of their design and construction. It really helps make a video like this more complete. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.